The steps that started the move from for the five families to the gangland were that they had, in previous books, we established that they were using the subway system as you know a way to move around. Most people don't use the subways anymore because they're full of gangs. Um, so the 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 kicking off point was an assassination attempt. Uh, the El Diablo's gang, which was an offshoot of Los Magos, assassinates the head of um, the Los Magos, the Los Reyes Magos, which is the wise king, uh, Pedro. Stonewall, Bridge's friend, is second in command. Well, Bridge, of course, at the beginning gets caught in the crossfire, essentially, as they're looking at this, this virtual performance art exhibit. I, I wanted to establish some things right up front. I wanted there to be consequences for the no circuit in here for the whole boulder thing and tech and the technomancers and all that and you know the death of aristotle's grandmother there needed to be consequences one of those was that aristotle starts drinking heavily because he's he's you know feeling bad over his his grandmother his grandmother's disappearance slash death you know we don't know aristotle has become you know un untrustworthy yeah unreliable he shows up late to the event and you know barely saves Bridge's life, and Bridge, at the end of the No Circuit, had gotten a bodyguard from the Technomancer Council, so he got a, his own little pet wizard bodyguard named Mu, M-U, Chinese character for Null, um, or for Zero, or for Void, or something like that. So Mu is now his kind of new second bodyguard, but he's also kind of the status symbol of, hey, I got a pet wizard, which, you know, the Technomancers have kind of started uh, appearing in the underground of L.A. and other cities where they're selling these glow bugs, which are these, you know, the, the mana engines that are kind of perpetual energy machines. Bridge and Stonewall, you know, duck the assassination attempt by Bridge, but Stonewall kind of for, almost forces Bridge to come with him to meet with the, the shot callers, the, the heads of Los Magos, uh, and, and discuss, okay, well, what is our reaction? What are we going to do? You know, this gang that we've been beefing with has assassinated our leader, so, you know, there's really only two options. We either submit or we go for go for broke, go for revenge. And one of the things Stonewall has been trying to do with Los Magos and, again, the rest of the families is build it less, to be less of a gang and more of a community. And, again, that's kind of that whole tribal thing, is that, you know, people gather together in collectives, in, you know, these, these groups, these communities, for, if you go back to ancient times, it was for protection. You know, one lone hunter might not be able to survive, but ten hunters and their families gathered together and pooling their resources can make a village and the village gets bigger and you know the tribe gets bigger and we expand that to nations and, and all that sort of thing well stonewall's ultimate goal in his mind he's he's a political science major and his ultimate goal was he would like to uh ba you know build a community that is not dependent on the corporations and is a more free you know, free society that doesn't um, exploit its lower classes. Yes, it sounds communist. Yes, it's socialist, and and he admits as much. But you know, it's his it's his dream of, of how things are meant to be, and he doesn't ever expect that this you know will happen in his lifetime. But he does want to try to build the, you know, try to try to move Los Magos that way because the gangs in America. And uh, you know, around the world, uh, a lot of the gangs 
were built, especially if you're talking about the immigrant gangs of, you know, Mexicans or um, the Irish, the Italians, uh, you know, the, the origins of the mafioso, aren't about doing gangster shit. It's about protecting your block, your street, your territory. You know, your family lives on this street, and there's another family that, you know, they might come and take your shit or hurt you or, you know, extort you or whatever. So you band together. You have people who protect, you know, protect the 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 community. And that's that's essentially what gangs and tribes are. I mean, they're just they're they're started with the idea of protecting the community. Now, obviously, money corrupts things and as gangs learn they can make money, they do criminal things and Obviously, they're, they're not necessarily a positive influence, but their foundation was one of, you know, a positive influence of protecting a community, protecting the tribe. You know, I wanted to make that very clear that the, the protagonists of this story are very much the, you know, villains of many of our action movies of the 80s, you know, the, I think of Rumble in the Bronx for some reason, and granted it's technically the 90s, although I think it might have been shot in the 80s. But, you know, it's that uh, this gang is, is this, this gang is, is going to, is, is there to just destroy people and, and take lives and take money and all this stuff. And what I wanted to do was take those guys and those gangsters who are doing gangster shit. They're, you know, they're running hookers, they're um, probably slinging drugs, um, you know, they may be extorting for protection money and that sort of thing. But I wanted to make them the, I don't want to say heroes, but certainly the victims that needed saving. Because what we found out really early on is that Los Magos, when, when Bridge and, and Aristotle and Mew go with Stonewall to meet with the uh, shot callers of Los Magos, they also are me. One of the shot callers is actually a civilian um, who's not in the gang, and he's part of the Citizens Brigade. And it turns out every one of the gangs, other than Bottle City Boys, mostly, have these Citizens Brigades. They're people that are just normal, everyday, average American Joes or Jose's, in the case of you know, uh, of Los Magos. They're just everyday people whose shit has gotten confiscated by the local government. Uh, and one of, the, uh, one of the plots that Bridge discovers is that the police have been using the LGL's uh, authority to basically uh, evict entire streets worth of people. If there was like, you know, a crack house on one corner, everybody on that street loses their shit. They get kicked out of, out of their house because they're aiding and abetting a crime. It's, it's really ethnic cleansing um, on a, you know, on the scale of Los Angeles. And nobody's talking about it, of course, because all the media organizations are owned by the corporations. Many of them owned by Chronosoft. So these citizens, these citizens, they don't have anywhere to go. Well, Los Magos and Asia Town and the others have taken them in and formed these citizens brigades. So every one of the, all three of the main um, families have a citizens brigade, brigade, although El Diablos actually doesn't now. So I guess it would be Asia Town probably has one, though we don't really hear about that one. Los Magos has one. Bottle City Boys don't necessarily have one because they're, a virtual gang. They don't have a physical presence other than, uh, you know, for protection of the, the little hologram machines that is, is let their leader talk to the outside world. And then the New Panthers are all considered citizens um, because they're all, you know, they're non-violence. They're not doing gang gangster shit. Citizens brigades also have a say in what the gang does. They're, they're one of the shot callers. Although... Some of the shot callers, if you see some of the, the interactions, do not agree with the whole Citizen Brigade thing. As a matter of fact, that's one of the points of tension. There's two shot callers that we, that we uh, 
that I, I show in the, the very first meeting at the barn, which is Go Goyo and Sierra. And Goyo is old school uh, Mexican gangster, probably in his late 40s, early 50s. And of course, the guy I think of when I think of Goyo, the guy if, I, if in a movie that would be perfect to play him, would be Danny Trejo. Because he has that look. He, he's got that you know tattooed look, the face that looks like it's 20 miles of bad road and, and 80 years worth of living in 20. And so that's that's kind of who I was thinking of for Goyo. Um, although probably a little older and he's, he's a little infirm because he's wearing a cane, using a cane. Of course, Sierra is a young female um, shot caller, which is has been unheard of. She was uh, promoted to shot caller when her father and her brother were killed, and she was going to be like a nurse. Uh, I think I said nurse. But she was going to be some professional, and she ended up taking control of her section of the gang, of the Los Magos gang, because her father and brother were killed. And, of course, being a woman, somebody like Goyo, there's automatic tension because he's old school, and he wants to just do gangster shit, and, you know, Pedro and... Stonewall both are not they're wanting to move away from gangster shit into more legitimate shit and keep you know the citizens safe It's a bit dark, isn't it? 